Hey there gorgeous, it's Jess here and I'm so excited to share with you this quick and easy five minute skincare and makeup routine that I use all the time when I'm late for work. And it's perfect for all you busy moms out there or those who wanna have a really minimalistic approach to skincare and makeup. I also think it's perfect for hot, humid summer weather and pairs perfectly with the last video that I did on summer outfits and how to deal with hot and humid weather. So if you're interested, you can check that out in the link above here. My sensitive acne prone and combo skin is very hard to deal with and it's taken me quite a long time to get it to where it is right now. So I wanted to share with you some tips and tricks as to how this routine actually helps with that skin type. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you this routine within five minutes, all recorded in real time without cutting out any parts. All these products are pregnancy safe with the exception of any that I point out specifically. But of course, please check with your physician just to be sure. Towards the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how this makeup look has lasted after 12 hours. I'm also going to explain how to adapt this routine to your particular lifestyle. My goal was to make this as realistic as possible, so I started out by showing you how my skin looks when I just woke up in the morning. It's around 7.30, 8 a.m. I'm showing you the under eye wrinkles and bags that I have, as well as discolorations I have on my face from the age spots and acne scars. To keep me accountable for the time limit, I started a five minute timer on my cell phone. To start off my morning skincare routine for sensitive acne prone combo skin, I start with a non-irritating cleanser. I absolutely love this one from Crave Beauty. It's the Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser that has many antioxidants, which helps slow down the signs of aging. Cleansing is one of the most important parts of a proper skincare routine, so it's important you don't skip this step. Dermatologists recommend that you do this between 30 to 60 seconds to make sure you're actually removing impurities from your face. Now I know it's hard when you're in a rush, but please don't press too hard on your face when you're lathering up, otherwise it can cause further wrinkles. Use lukewarm water to cleanse and rinse your skin. Cold water traps bacteria in the pores and makes it more difficult to cleanse, while hot water increases skin sensitivity and strips your skin of natural oils. I use a fresh white towel every morning and night to dry my skin and gently exfoliate, which is important to reduce bacteria spread. And please skip this step if you have eczema as the friction will cause flare-ups. I've tried so many eye cream products over the years, and this particular one from Drunk Elephant, the Sea Tango eye cream, has been the most effective in reducing the appearance of my dark circles over time. I have dry under eyes, so this is a really important step before my under eye concealer. Next step is a simple moisturizer. I go with the simpler approach and skip serums in the morning to reduce any potential irritations. Active serums are much better at night when it has time to work on your skin. You might be wondering, why am I using a moisturizer before a tinted moisturizer? This Paula's Choice moisturizer can be quite drying and I found it perfect when it's layered on top of a moisturizer. An all-in-one product like this is so essential to a fast and easy morning skincare and makeup routine. I love the fact that it has SPF 30 and blends into my skin seamlessly while blurring my pores. However, there is one very big downside and that's the shade range. There's only one tint that I've been able to find. Also, based on my research, this sunscreen is not safe for pregnancy due to the willow bark extract or salicylate. I'm currently doing research and experimentation on other tinted moisturizers with a much broader shade range and is also pregnancy safe to see how my sensitive acne prone combo skin reacts. So I hope to get back to you all with a more in-depth review on this in the future. The next step in this routine is concealer. The RMS Beauty Uncover Up Natural Finish Concealer has simple ingredients and does not emphasize my fine lines under my eyes and mimics the skin texture without being too matte. I use a slight shade lighter than my skin to brighten my under eye area. Make sure you're applying your under eye concealer in an upside down triangle pattern under each eye so that you de-emphasize any puffiness or discoloration. Otherwise, if you just pat it just underneath the eyes, you'll have some panda eyes. So the next step is bronzer, and I use this for three different uses. I use it to contour my face, also to add a little bit of warmth and light to my face, and then finally, I also use it as an eyeshadow. Technically, this brush is actually labeled as a blush brush, but I found that the shape is perfect for how I like to use my bronzer and contour it around my face. You may see me doing some fishy faces, and that's just to pop out my cheekbone so I know where to be applying it. It should be right under where the cheekbone is to emphasize and give me some more shape to my face. I have a round face, so it's quite difficult to get some of those angles. The way you apply this on your face will differ by your face shape. For face shape, I've found it best to apply it in a three pattern. I will add a separate link in the description that has a diagram to help guide you. 
Next, I use a fluffy eye brush to apply that same bronzer to the outside corners of my eyes to give some depth. Figuring out how to do eye makeup for hooded eyes like mine actually took me quite a while, so if you're interested in a separate tutorial on this, please let me know in the comments down below. Highlighter is one of my favorite products to use when I'm in a rush. Apply the highlighter where the sun hits you, like the brow bone, cheekbone, nose, and cupid's bow. Make sure you find a highlighter that's lighter than your natural skin tone to give that glowy, youthful look. My highlighter doubles as an eyeshadow. Apply it with a flat brush to the inner corner of your eyelids, as well as your tear duct. This technique brings light to the center of the face and helps brighten up your eye area to help you look more awake than you might actually be. My husband always teases me about the faces I make when I get ready, but I didn't realize how bad it was until I watched this video. I'm so curious if any of you make the same faces I do. Curling your eyelashes is a very important step to helping you look more awake and wide-eyed. The way I like to curl my lashes is to squeeze the eyelash curler as close to the base of my eyelashes as possible and then slowly move that upwards and outwards, squeezing once each time. Holding my eyelid up with my finger but also looking down helps me better see my eyelashes for curling and for mascara. My eyelashes are typically very straight and most formulas actually weigh it down so that it becomes straight again. So it's important to buy waterproof, drier formulas like this one if you have similar lashes like mine. Doing my brows is last on my list because I can always skip the step if I really need to and I'm in a rush. It's as realistic as possible, I didn't pluck my eyebrows and let them grow wild and free because often when I don't have time, I'll forget to pluck my eyebrows. My favorite brow product for quick and easy application is a brow pencil. It's very easy to fill in any sparse hairs and it's important to have a spoolie on the other end to brush the product out. Here's my makeup look after completing all the essential steps. Now, as I mentioned before, the brow part is optional for me. And what I do to fill in that time is after I have breakfast, I actually put on lip oil. This particular lip oil is very comfortable and leaves a beautiful red tint on your mouth even after eating or wiping it off. I'm so excited to show you my final completed look. What do you think? Here's another trick. I typically put my hair up in a bun while I do my morning routine so that I get some beautiful curls afterwards. I also want to show you a comparison of how I used to look before makeup and five minutes after my skincare makeup routine. So I'm gonna show you some side by side of how I look with indoor lighting as well as outdoor natural lighting. So this is what my makeup looks like after almost about 12 hours, I think it's around 7 o'clock right now, and everything is pretty much still in place, no major smudging, and the great part about the lip oil that I used is that it leaves a little bit of a tint even after the gloss is gone, which is great because I do have really pale lips. One way for you to adapt this makeup look to your lifestyle is think about what features you wanna play up on your face. So for me, I like to play up my eyes and also I love having a healthy glow on my face. So that's where I spent most of my time. For you, it might be your lips, it might be your eyebrows. Also think about which products that you already have that work well for your skin. You can easily replace most of my products with something that you have as long as it follows some of the guidelines that I mentioned and keeping it minimal, especially for sensitive acne prone combo skin. I'd love to know what you thought about this five minute skincare and makeup routine. What did you think about it? Do you think the tips were useful? How did you adapt it to your lifestyle? Or what other tips that you have to add? I'd love to hear from you. I hope to see you again in one of my other videos. Bye.